But uh, he asked me to uh, think of some stories, and, and I could think of some homework assignments that I had, some funny stuff. Um, and most of us, well, um, me, I, w I waited till last minute for everything. So we had to have a thousand word um, essay, and he gave us like two weeks to do it. Of course, at midnight the night before, that's when I got, oh, you know, I got this essay that I got to write. A thousand words, and it was, and it was, uh, the, the course was called Courtship and, and Marriage in the Home or something like that, okay? Uh, brother, either Brother Fisher or Dan Liss, I, I don't remember, was it Brother Fisher that did that? Okay. And so, I, okay, at, at midnight the night before, you know, your, your mind is fried, you really want to go to bed, I got to think of a thousand word essay, and so somebody had a magazine, and I, I forget what magazine, I said, you know what, and it, it just came on me as a, a, a brilliant idea all of a sudden. I go, you know what, I'm going to cut out a picture of a guy and a girl together that looked like they were dating, and I'm going to turn it in, and it says, a picture says a thousand words. <laughs> <laughs> was, you know, at midnight, you got you to go with it. And so I cut out, I cut out that. And I pasted it to that, and I wrote in a, a picture that says a thousand words. And I knew I was probably going to get an F anyway. But it came back, and he passed out the grades, and he gave me an A+. Plus. <laughs> True story. And, I, and I'm, I'm trying to think of uh, one of the other assignments that I had for another class. And my mind just went blank. This shows you what happens when you get my age. Uh, you, you have something. But it was an assignment that I had to do. It was something like that that I, uh, I, I, I have to come back and do it because my mind is totally blank right now. I've, uh, I really, I've got another one I'd love to tell you, but uh, should I tell it, James? Wait, we got, we're all adults here, right? Th this, this happened after school was out. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tell it because now you're real curious about what it is. I was out of school, and, you know, Brother Wolf had changed it, it had taught us very well how to, you know, how to be a minister of music, and, and so when the preacher got to preaching, you know, I sat down, you know, kind of over by the piano, so, uh, you know, when, when it got time for him to finish, and I got the cues, and all I can get up, you know, start playing soft music. So everything went well, and uh, we had, this was a pretty large church at the time, I was music director, and they ran about 600 or 700, something at the time. Very good preacher, but he was preaching on you know, uh, gossiping and all that, and, and really had a, a great uh, metaphor that he was using. And it was, he used birds, and he used buzzards. You know, the buzzards, they come and feed on everything and, and eat, you know, all the dead. And they, and, but, but the other kind of bird was the eagle. And the eagle would fly way above everything else, and they don't let the little stuff do it. But he goes, just because, and he, he started using parts of the bird's anatomy that uh, you, can, you can compare from buzzards to eagles. So, <laughs> Joel's heard this before, so that's why he's laughing. So, <laughs> so <laughs> he started off, and uh, he started off saying, you know, just because you have feathers doesn't necessarily mean that you are a eagle. And then he'd go into this rant. He says, because because buzzards have feathers too, so he used that. And so, so and then he then he went to the claws. You know, he said, "I'm an eagle because uh, a bird has because you got I have claws, so I'm an I'm an eagle." He says, "Well, I got news for you." And he'd go into that. He says, "Just because you have claws don't mean you're an eagle because buzzards have claws too." Went to the wings, you know, just because you have wings doesn't mean you're an eagle cause, because birds have, uh, uh, buzzards have uh, wings too. So he went and he was going there and he was, a, he was from the south. And there's double many <laughs> different words from the south. And, and I'm sitting back there really enjoying it. I mean, he was, it was a great sermon, really well out, and he was really, he was really doing it really well. Conviction was all over the place. <laughs> Conviction has hit until until he come to the beak. 
Except for in the South, they don't call it a beak. They call it a pecker. <laughs> and he grew, up, he, grew up, he grew up in the South. So he gets up there. <laughs> he gets up there and says, you know, I'm an eagle because I have, and he said, I have a pecker. <laughs> and I, I go, oh my God, did I just hear what I just heard? But it gets better. And so, and so I put my head down, and I'm laughing. And I go, it dawned on me. I said, I got to help the brother out. I got to help a brother out. So I cupped my hands. I cupped my hands like this. And, and I said, beak, beak, beak. And to this day, I really thought he, I was saying, preach, preach, preach. Because he had to be thinking. He had to be thinking. Joel has not got this excited about any of my sermons ever. And if Joel gets this excited, I must be hitting striking oil, and he put it in another gear. <laughs> and he kept, he kept going, and I, I, I laughed uncontrollably. I put my head down, and I laughed. And then, and, and then after about a minute, you know, I, and my eyes were tears, I looked up, and I said, okay, I'm going to see who else caught this, somebody else in this congregation caught this besides me. I'm going to see who's all, because I know some honorary people, you know, one was the, the, the director of the Christian school and the youth leader. I said, they catch stuff like this. I went up there, and one guy's name's Gary Dalton. I go, Gary Dalton would have caught this. I looked up, and Gary Dalton looked like he was that close to coming up front and, and confessing to everybody he was a buzzard. I mean, that <laughs> conviction, <laughs> conviction, I go, they, they're not laughing. They did not catch it. So I started going down this, this side. I go, surely there's somebody besides me who caught this. I went down. I didn't see one person smiling or laughing. It's just conviction. And conviction hit me. And I go, I'm the most carnal person in this entire church. I said, surely there's got to be somebody. So I started, I started from the back. And we came, we came out front. And I didn't see anybody, even the young people. I mean, they were just conviction. Until I got back up to the second row, and, and we, I met eye contact with the preacher's wife. <laughs> and <laughs> she knew what I was thinking. I knew what I was thinking, and I lost it. I lost it. She rolled over laughing. And I, I promise you, I, you know, there's times in your life when you laugh, and you can't catch your breath, and you really think you're going to die, because I can't, I, that's how hard I was laughing. I laughed probably for 10, 15 minutes uncontrollably. And, and when I got done laughing, you know, people were out the altar praying. I never to go to the piano. They must have thought I was a conviction. And, and I, tell, I, tell, I, tell, I tell people to this day, I don't know how those birds landed. I have no idea how he ended that sermon. But I'll never forget the sermon about the birds. I'm just saying you would have never heard that story in the 80s. Only the 70s. Joel Barnaby. Oh, my God. Anytime Lewis opens his mouth to, to tell a story, I just start laughing because he's naturally uh, hilarious. I roomed with a couple guys during my uh, sentencing at JCM. <laughs> One was Steve Buxton. We called him Bucky. And the other one was Tony Koppel. And uh, Steve Buxton became under conviction during one of the revival services. And Steve was this California kid. I was from Philly. And he had this really uh, kind of surfer, cool guy image, suave thing going on for him. You remember, Michael? But when uh, Bucky got more spiritual, he was kind of an edgy person, kind of wild California guy. But when he got spiritual, he came into, back into our room. I'll never forget, our room was positioned in the back part of the dorm, but there was a, an exit uh, door back there. And I go in the room, and I hear a lot of commotion going on in the back door. And I look in, in my section of the room, where I had a lot of eight tracks and a tracks and, and uh, records, and 
which reminds me, there was a time when we were in there playing Benny and the Jets from Elton John. I was practicing playing the bass, and I had these speakers, and the music was up real loud, and the room was always packed out with everybody coming to the room. And I looked up one time after I was in there trying to jam and trying to figure out the bass line on Elton John, big B -B -B Benny and the Jets. I looked up, and Brother Kraft was standing there. <laughs> and everybody else had kind of scooted out of the door. Um, and he said, son, we don't play this kind of music in this school, and you're going to have to uh, stop that right now. Do you understand? What's your name, son? I want to make a note of this. <laughs> yeah, Joel Lewis. <laughs> So the time when Bucky was in, and I, I noticed all my stuff was disarray. So I go to the back room, and, and Bucky's back there just crying and saying, I'll never do it. And he's got all my records, throwing them out the back door because he, he suddenly turned really spiritual and wanted to do it on my stuff. <laughs> I said, wait a second, man. Get your, go buy your own records and throw them and trash them. You can't get spiritual on my heathenism. That don't work. In Philly, there was a thing back in the 70s where you would tie your used sneakers, uh, old worn out sneakers by the shoestrings together. And so they would throw them up on the, on the electric wires and they'd have sneakers just hanging all over the place. Well, I figured I was gonna do that maybe my first year through Jackson, uh, you don't get a chance to change your sneakers much and it was a payday at some point I think Brother Wolf finally figured out uh, the percentage what I was going to get from playing that one summer of course we never did know the percent we just said you're getting a percent okay well we did uh, handle the cash at the record table and I'll change another subject that's how we got our LWT suits dry cleaned. <laughs> it's, I was only learning from the other musicians. Don't, I didn't say no name, Wayne. <laughs> the Lord will repay. And... Um, so I, I took my sneakers and threw them up on the, on the wires at Jackson, and the two wires came together. It blew a, one of the circuit things, and it, it had to black out the entire campus. <laughs> and I went like this. <sighs> Boy, it scared me. It sparked together. I don't know. I'm sorry, Brother Kraft. I confess that was me. Who was in that group of of spiritually minded college students that went downtown. You remember there was a, a restaurant down there we used to go to get fried pickles? Yes, the Mayflower. We'd go down and get fried pickles. It's the craziest thing. And we ended up, there was a park across the street and a bunch of us were spiritually minded. So we had been work, drinking a lot of water and tab <laughs> and, and it was there was no bathrooms that late at night so why not uh, some of the guys just felt a relief to release in the in the fountain <laughs> it's true Next thing you know, we had these cops surrounding us. They wanted to know who we were, where we were from. We didn't know that it was, it was a, a night spot for unscrupulous activity at night. <laughs> and they said, okay, you guys are gonna have to go downtown. You're all gonna be arrested. And all we can think about is, oh my God, theology students arrested in this park late at night, exposing themselves. <laughs> it's the end, I'll never preach, I'll never get licensed in the organization now. There's a fellow by the name of, his initials are BW, 
he was also spiritually minded, and he went on a, not that that's a bad thing. I mean, it's, it's a pus to be spiritually minded, but th there are some things that are a little off a little bit. So he went on a 40-day fast. Anybody remember the 40-day fast, spiritual giant? Brother Kraft certainly, he's like, yeah, I remember that guy. He broke his fast on pizza and cheeseburgers. And his body went. He, I think he ended up in the hospital. And we were thinking, here's another headline. Here's the Jackson Papers. Theology student dies on campus uh, in a uh, forced fast. Uh, Yes, Ben Wank. I'm not going to say his name. We knew it wasn't Bruce Willis. No. <laughs> no, that's not right. I'm trying to think. <clears throat> Who were the guys that crawled up over the ceiling in the... This is right, Remember where the offices were? And they, they crawled over and went down was Keith Sillette and um, James Shockley yes and they got down and got test scores and um, <laughs> recall but that was great times great fun out of, out of Professor Lewis's filing cabinet thank you for not locking that Joe Lewis Okay, we're, we're going to, okay, we got, uh, we got to name that tune thing coming up. Check that mic, make sure it's not, please. There should be a mic. In the monitors, I'm on. Hello? Great. Hi. We thought it would be fun to remember some of the old songs that we grew up singing on Sunday night. Uh, some of us still sing them on a Sunday night service once a year. So a phrase is going to pop up on the PowerPoint screen, and Joel's going to help me to see who is going to shout out the name of the song. So we're going to start out with what we're going to call a Pentecostal hymn. And so if you know the name of the song... Glory. <laughs> All right, I knew Wilkinson and Brother Lewis would know that, so we got that one good. All right, next one. This is a Lanny Wolf song. Yes, got it. All right, moving on to a Pentecostal hymn. Heaven's Jubilee. Good, you guys know these. Good. Okay, another Lanny Wolf song. Le now, Brother Wolf is not allowed. Brother Wolf, you can't. <laughs> You're not allowed. <laughs> well, okay, but you're not allowed. Okay. All right, it's the piano. I'm going to try to do one here that's just name this song in three notes. And this is a Lanny Wolf song. Ready? Is the piano on? Ready? I love him too much. Yes, I love him too much. Good. All right. Back to a Lanny Wolf song. Just memories Only to keep. Only one life. Only one life. Good. Okay, a Pentecostal hymn. No. Oh, I want to see him. Yes, Rhonda. Yes, all right. <laughs> Another good one. And giveth me songs in the night. No, it's, it's, it's a Pentecostal hymn, not a Lenny Wolf song. <laughs> and giveth me songs in the night. Where's Marita? You know this one. Redeemed? Redeemed. Right. And you didn't know that, Brother Wolf. I'm really disappointed. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is another hymn. Uh, let's see if do this one.
No, it's, this is a Pentecostal hymn, Brother Wolf. <laughs> Not one of your songs. In my heart there rings a melody. <laughs> there is a song that Jesus gave me. Yeah. Okay, good. it's coming back now. I knew it would. All right. Next Pentecostal hymn is Slytherin Towers and Sunday. Uh, Brother, Wolf, Brother Lewis, you guessed this yesterday, so you can't participate. No. Yes. <laughs> yes, Jeanette, you knew that. All right. <laughs> okay, good. All right, next one. Oh, how bright the path. Yes. All right. It's all coming back now, right? Okay. <laughs> I knew it's in there. Okay, the next one. Path has never yet been Joy, unspeakable. Joy unspeakable. Yes, Brother Lewis, you're still singing those songs, I'm sure. Okay, Lanny Wolf song. When I look back over the mountain, the valley's always been a very tall I keep falling in love with him. Yes, I keep falling in love with him. You gotta sing all the right. songs. All right. Oh, no, this is. Did you write that from a candy bar? Was that the one you wrote from a candy bar? Oh, that was Stucky's. Okay, I knew there was a story there. Okay, another, where am I? Okay, now I'm doing another Lenny. What song on the piano? Ready? <laughs> well, you said that I didn't. <laughs> No, this is a Lenny Wolf song. I had another note. It could be in Sweet By and By, though. Maybe that's why, where we wrote it from. No, this is a very popular, one of his best songs. Surely the present. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, okay, I thought that would be an easy one. Okay. Lenny Wolf song. That was the verb. Some may say he doesn't fit with us. Jesus is still the yes, answer. Jesus is still the answer. And though some may say he doesn't fit. Good. Next one. Know. The finest words I know could not begin. More than wonderful. More than wonderful. Thank you. This is a test. One more. Go ahead. Just like the day. Wind is blowing again. I thought that would be easy. Okay. Yes, the wind is blowing again. Okay, I didn't have my answers ready. Another one I'm going to play really quick here. Um, God's wonderful people. God's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Joel said you'll have to sing the phrase till you get to the title of the song. It's good. All right, one more Lenny Wolf song, Nor the One Who Shines for a Day. The Race, yes. Pentecostal hymn. Just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land. All right. Okay. Um, and the white-robed angels singing the story. A sinner has come home. New name written down in glory. A new name in glory. Yes. Okay. Uh, floods of joy or my soul. <laughs> okay. Very good. I'm going to skip the next piano song. Go to the next song. Pentecostal hymn. Next slide. Okay. About the angels singing and the old redemption. No. Oh, yes, Victory. I thought you said Deeper in Jesus. <laughs> that was a new song. Yes, Victory in Jesus. Okay, last one. But a hush comes the singing. My house is full. Good. Very good. You guys were very good at that. All right, that's it. My house is full, but my field is having a good time yeah we have a very very special late breaking tour bus that just showed up we're very excited about this it's really not on the program but but we couldn't be more pleased that that what has taken place and I want you to get ready are you ready you're not ready you're not ready. Are you ready? Benita's ready. A very special, I'm, matter of fact, stand up on your feet and get ready as we introduce right now the one 
and the only Lanny Wolf Trio right here with us this morning. Here they are. No, come on, give it up for the Lanny Wolf Trio. For the Lanny. Here comes Marita, she's a little late. Let's give it up for the Lanny Wolf Trio. Come on, everybody. Hurry up, Marita. Dave, don't talk, just sing. You forgot your tambourine. Anybody carrying a tambourine out there? Registered? <laughs> We're so glad to be here today and uh, so glad to have Dave and Marita here, our band, our wonderful Wayne Goodine here on the organ. Are we ready? We ready? Now I want that rhythm. Perfect. Before I came to Jackson, I, I couldn't speak in front of anybody. I was very inward. I, I just had, I couldn't, I couldn't, just couldn't. But God's wonderful people just came into my heart and opened it. And I, I can speak now. And you know, I know Lainey wants me to hush sometimes, but I just can't. It's in me now, and it's coming out. It is. And it makes me feel like I've just come home. <sighs> coming home. Coming. was greener on the other side so I took my share and I said goodbye to my family as they cried I spent all my money Yes. 
do it one more time. Hey! 